Hello, I'm Stephen Fry, and I have adored gadgets ever since I was knee-high to a space hopper. My obsession runs deep. When I was 15, I laid out a fortune on the first new Polaroid camera. And 40 years later, I still have a desperate need to have the latest phone, alarm clock, egg timer as soon as they're launched, if not before. Gadgets entertain us. They connect us. They educate us. They impress us. And of course, sometimes they frustrate us. But whichever way you look at them, they make the world a, a much, much better and dare I say, happier place. So, come into my world as I, along with some of my friends, reveal a feast of magnificent gadgets that will provide for a fun and stress-free existence. I could certainly fall asleep. Some will be from the future. Oh, my God. Uh, some from the past. This here is the first iPod. <laughs> some are gadgets you can only dream of owning. Oh, completely silent. It's electric and simple gizmos you can buy today that will change the way you live your life tomorrow. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's vibrating. Particularly. And every week I'm going to be creating my very own super gadget, the ultimate gadget of its kind. Well, I'll be giving it a go. <laughs> oh, no! Consider me your humble servant, your knight in crumpled corduroy, your gadget man. Tonight, I'll be looking at how gadgets can take the misery out of your daily commute. Ah, oh, it's taking me to a happy place. Jonathan Ross will help me test some of the more imaginative modes of transport that could help you weave your way to work. No one will forget seeing us in this, though, Stephen. They won't. And I'll be attempting to create a super taxi, something that will never be caught in a traffic jam again. Ooh. Four cons of daily life. Dot com, compete, compute, and worst of all, commute. The daily grind from home to work, finding somewhere to park through streets crammed with traffic, jostling through pavements crammed with pedestrians, and then having to make the same journey back to home. There must be a better solution. Whoa. Something like this electric bike, maybe. Oh. This is the Yike bike, so-called because you keep saying yikes. It comes from New Zealand, has a radius of about six miles, and it's rather good fun once you get used to it. it takes about 15 minutes of practice. If you're brave enough, it has a top speed of 14 miles per hour. It's made from carbon fiber, but it isn't exactly cheap to buy. At least it's cheap to run at about a penny per mile. The great thing about the Yike bike is once you get a fit of the wobbles, you just have to stand up. That's a great safety feature. And talking of safety, you may wonder why I'm not wearing a Bradley Wiggins approved cycle helmet. Well, I'm wearing this collar instead. It's not just something to keep me warm. If you get an accident like that, Oh, my God. Are you all right? How do you feel? I'm fine. It's a loud bang, but it's good. My head's protected. We're both wearing the Hovding inflatable helmet. It deploys in just a tenth of a second, rather like a car airbag, when it detects sudden movements. But you can only use it once. It seems pretty expensive, but surely a small price to pay for avoiding the disaster of helmet hair. Would you recommend one of these? I would. It's, yeah, it's very effective. It's a peculiar look, I have to say. <laughs> as much as I've enjoyed the Yike bike, it doesn't exactly represent the blissful state of nirvana that I'd like to achieve on my commute. Uh -huh. oh. I have the urge to invent a better way of travelling to work myself but there are some obvious hurdles to negotiate. Well, whichever you choose, you're going to run into the terrible snarl-up that is a city's traffic at commuting time. It occurred to me that maybe some other conveyance might be more appropriate. I happen to drive a London taxicab. I adore it. 
And taxi drivers, as we know, are always very reluctant to go over the river. But I wondered if they might not be more willing to go on the river. How about pimping a taxi cab such that it becomes an amphibious vehicle? My crack team of gadget man boffins are beavering away in their shed as I speak, trying to turn a two and a half ton taxi into a boat. Something capable of dodging all the traffic jams by simply taking to the nearest river. If they can make it work, it will be the ultimate gadget commuting vehicle. Drivers aren't the only victims of rush hour. I'm now going to turn my attention to another form of commuting used by three million of us every day. The train. Travelling by train in busy periods is painful in every way. The first is the temperature. Cramped carriages can be stiflingly hot, which is where this air-conditioned jacket from Japan comes in. Inside, a little switch, which I'm going to turn on. Oh, can, you zip it up? can you feel it? Yeah, I feel like cold air blowing down the bottom half of my body. Yeah? Yeah. Its built-in fans expel 20 litres of sweaty commuting air a second. It looks a bit North Korean dictator style, but it's, it's actually not bad. It's a perfectly good blue. If you like it so much, I'll give it to you. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> That's the oppressive heat dealt with then. My next bugbear on this carriage is noise, racket, din. Yes, this is one of the curses of commuting, having to sit next to someone who's got tish tish leaking earphones. Ugh. Thankfully, I have a wonderful gadget that completely transports you away from the hells of commuting making the journey the most enjoyable hour of your day. Ah, oh, it's taking me to a happy place. It's a much nicer environment than the, the rather sprawling suburbs of South London. And what's more, I can even take off these visors here, and now you can see nothing of what I can see. Everybody else is having to look at South London, and I have the joy of a little film here. It's rather sweet. It's a sheepdog trial. Oh, bless you. So I'm in my own little bubble. Not only do these specs play video, but they can also connect to the internet via Wi-Fi. They run on the Android operating system, so you can choose from thousands of apps to download and while away the drudgery of the 742 from Clapham Junction. I have to say, this is rather fun. I don't know if one looks anything other than a supreme twit in it, but does that matter? But I must say, I'm rather tempted. Hello, real world. Another way of making commuting more bearable is to share the pain with a friend. And I can't think of anyone more suitable than my techno-savvy chum, Jonathan Ross. Well met, Jonathan. Stephen. Meet Gadget Man. Gadget Man, you're spoiling the beard, I notice now as well. <laughs> yeah, I copied that from you. Well, this makes us even better team, Gadget Man and Bobbin. This is my first gadget. See an umbrella. If you, you can break it. It's an unbreakable umbrella. Well, that's, I bet yours isn't. Mine is broken. Look yeah, at this. There you are. Already, this bit's come off here. Well, this one, it is used by the Philippine Secret Service as a weapon. Well, it is completely unbreakable. Yeah, I, don't, I very much doubt that's true. I don't. I don't. But have a go. Look, it's got a hole in it already. <laughs> right. That's I didn't it's... say that part of it would be unbreakable. Well, you have to... Sp OK. <laughs> Let's get amongst this, then. <laughs> oh, oh, Christ. Well, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst gadget I've ever been given. And I've been given some terrible gadgets. All right. Well, I've got some other things for you to try. I should hope Believe so. Believe you me. Because <laughs> yeah. it's going to be a very short uh, career <laughs> as gadget man, if that's the best you can do. <laughs> He really is incorrigible, but he'll be useful for testing my next rush hour buster. A new fully electric vehicle that claims to always find a way through traffic. It also claims to be a two-seater. 
I like the look of this. Do you like it? Would you like to be my passenger? I would love to be your passenger. It's incredible, isn't it? It's like a little it's, concept car. It's the Renault Twizy. So where shall I sit in the back? Um, in, in the back, I'm afraid. Are you going to be able to get in there? I can try. Have a go. Well, the first time you've said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mama. I'll, I'll hold your... Oh, here. thank you. He's going to do it. He's going to do I know he's going to do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. If I... No, I tell you. You know what we need to do? Surely the seat vents fall. Leg him back. Yeah, good, good point. Uh, uh, yes. You've probably done better than I could Not do. Not elegant. Uh, 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 I feel... I like the tightness. <laughs> it feels weird, soaringly safe. We the are. Twizy doesn't have any windows. In parts of Europe, that means it's classified as a glorified moped and can be driven by 16-year-olds. In the UK, it just means you get wet. You almost feel like that with cars like this. I think they should have a sort of ramp where you can drive down into the back compartment of tube trains oh, to get you into town and then just drive out. Brilliant. Because it's small enough, yeah. just a separate ramp. Ah, oh, we got looked at there. Hello. Hello. Electric. Not polluting. Oh. Yes, as with all electric vehicles, there's no internal combustion chucking out any fumes. No one will forget seeing us in this, though, Stephen. They won't. It's like a kinder surprise when we climb out. <laughs> <laughs> the Twizy runs on a lithium-ion battery, basically a larger version of what's in your mobile phone, and it takes three and a half hours to recharge. Hello. Ever seen one of these before? What do you reckon? Yeah. It's pretty good. It can go 50. Yeah. Would you like a race? <laughs> he shut his window on us. He idea. shut his window on us. One of its great benefits is that it is road tax exempt, but Jonathan has spotted a fatal flaw. Here's the problem with this car. We are still stuck in traffic. We are very much. So it doesn't help. Sure, we're not polluting, but we're not really getting anywhere any faster. I'm impressed. I've got it. You've oh, well, got it. I'm sort of... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm afraid I've come over all John Wayne. <laughs> Look at the size of it. Oh, and this is how you plug it in, you see? Look at that. Oh, that's fabulous. It's as simple as that. That's a proper English plug as well. Yeah. Maybe American or European one. <laughs> Three prongs. There you go. It's a, it's, it was a fun ride, though. Well, if you're still up for it, we've got a couple of other things you to know, I was, I was born up for testing. Let's go. We start with these motorised roller skates. They're not that much smaller than the car we were both <laughs> just <laughs> both of us managed to get into. Dare you? I, I, I'll, I'll give it a try. Oh, I might be careful. Need... There's a helmet oh. here because I do think I might I'm need not some assistance. Be... They're self tight. That's very what... clever, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Helmet on. Okay. I might need a bit of assistance. Gonna... Yeah. Well done. Oh. Well done. Let's try and go around this loop here. So one in front of the other, I guess. That's right. Okay. Let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens. Turn it on. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, yes. Check it out. Oh, oh. Not, not... I'm not feeling any weight on you, on, on my arm. You you look as if you're almost controlling completely on your own. You're really doing this. I could I'm let go now. I'm, I'm not like, going No, to. you're not going to let go no, now. I'm not going to. If we got married in our later years, this is what we'd be like. <laughs> I'm going through the fountain. No, that... I really wouldn't go through that. the fountain. I think... I'm taking you with me. <laughs> <laughs> you bugger. You damn nearly okay. did. Oh. Well, Shall we go for a seat? Let's do that. My stuntman didn't really do these skates justice. They can do 10 miles an hour, so could actually speed up your walk to work by three times. Well, I, I feel that you earn at least 30% of the prize there. Yeah. That was quite something. I this mean, is must... fun, though. I mean, it's I think fun, yeah. It's fun. It, if you could get some real speed on them, I can imagine it would be like a sport. Yeah. Like a you really... Could, you could do a hockey version. Or like a kind of motorsport, but just men... Yeah. ...mollable. Yeah. But a fun experience. Like so many things you've shown me over the years, <laughs> something I wouldn't have done on my own. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say You that. lead the nation yeah. in uh, strange uh, pursuits. Well, are you prepared to try one more mode uh, of transport? I'm absolutely. Now, what, what possibly can you inflict <laughs> on me that won't be fun? Let's go for it. 
These electric scooters are called trikes. As you can see, they are basically tricycles. They're balanced enough to stand up on their own. They've got power packs. Wow. And you just stand on it, press the green button for power. There's a little throttle here. And as long as you just keep your weight slightly forward, the front wheel won't skid too much, especially on these... So it these works like a scooter, leads. then, just yeah, this little accelerator there. And... That's right. Off oh, blimey! We're off. Wait for me. Come follow. Oh. The trikes are designed in California and can go as fast as 18 miles an hour. <laughs> Very good fun. Oh, I'll ride this one home. These are fun. The frames cleverly flex in corners to stop you from toppling over. A bit like skiing, slalom. Not that I know. <laughs> A huge benefit is that, unlike a bike, you don't arrive to work hot and sweaty. Well, hello there. Hello. It's lunchtime. Oh, fantastic. Could you look stable our horses, Patrick, if you would? <sighs> so, what do you reckon of that? I loved it. I love them. That's the best thing you had me do today. Actually, they fold up, so they make a perfect commuter vehicle, don't they? Pop it into your office afterwards, get yeah. it out, put it in the back of the car. Fant really Absolutely. good fun, though. Absolutely. Well, um, you go and have lunch. Thank you. And I'm off to, uh, I'm off to drive a cab into the water. Has it come to that? Truly amphibious, yeah. A truly amphibious cab. Well, I wish you the very best of Thank luck. Thank you very much. OK, Thanks, I'll, I'll have As a always... chip in your honour. <laughs> Thank you. It was a Lovely pleasure. to see you. See you. Thank you. This isn't just my idea of the perfect commuting vehicle, but it's a world first, too. A London taxi made seaworthy. I hope. I don't mind telling you, I'm more than a little apprehensive as to how it's all going to turn out. If it goes wrong, I shall be mildly moist, to say the least. Time for my team to unveil the beast. I just hope they hadn't turned my plans for a super commuter into some sort of foul-looking dinghy. Oh, my God, I'm so nervous. I love this thing like a Are baby. Are you ready? Just about. OK? Yeah. Oh, it's still a cab. Still a cab. But with many additional oh. benefits. <laughs> it's extraordinary. The body has been completely sealed to waterproof it, and running boards full of foam have been attached to add buoyancy and stop the cab rocking from side to side in the water. The usual engine remains up front to drive the wheels, but now, poking out of the boot, is a propeller attached to a 10-horsepower electric outboard motor, controlled by a hand throttle inside. See you, boys. <laughs> None of the modifications stop it being road legal, although the extras have added weight and put the suspension under rather a lot of strain. Oh, that was a, that was a dodgy one. That brought, that brought down my visor. The noises. It's not actually anything serious. It's. It's the foam and an aluminium base, apparently, from all those slung. So that's causing um, a slightly noisier and bumpier ride than I would be used to. A little unnerving, considering I'm about to turn off the traffic-clogged roads and see if my amphicab will let me take a shortcut down the Thames. It's hard to imagine how this could float, I have to say. <laughs> it takes all my faith in technologists and engineers to entrust myself to this on water. It's just wrong. We've all seen those films. I feel like Chuck Yeager must have felt before he first broke the speed of sound in one of his jets. The right stuff. Not really. They say you always feel nervous your first time. Too blooming right you do. Oh, my goodness. This is extraordinary. The propeller's going. I'm afloat in a cab. This is wonderful. It's not very fast. Oh, there we go. 
Captain Bird's Fry is making steady, graceful progress. Nothing can possibly go wrong. Should I be worried about the smoke? It appears the propeller has caught on something as the motor has stopped. I am stricken. And rather embarrassingly, I'm just being overtaken by a duck. Help! Help! The aquatic division of my gadget man boffins immediately leapt into action to tow me to safety. I do what I'd call Jonathan. Magic of Bluetooth. <laughs> Hello, Jonathan. I am in the Thames on a floating amphibious cab. I like the sound of it. It sounds like the most flamboyant end to a stag night ever. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> the Hangover Part 3, the London story. I'm now emerald with envy. <laughs> Well, you had your fun on your, on your lovely tricycle. But um, anyway, I will see you Wednesday night and Thursday night with any luck. I hope you're still with us. <laughs> Indeed. I might be wet and covered in seaweed. All right. You dry up. OK, lots of love. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care. After 25 minutes repair work, the propeller is fixed. For hire. Just marvelous. With no traffic lights, speed cameras, or congestion, I'm free to worry about more important things. My in-car espresso machine. That'll stop one falling asleep at the wheel. Mmm, tasty. There's a serious point here that my Amphicab is making. With rush hours crippling much of the country into gridlock, opening up a major transportation route like a river, something that runs through the heart of most of our cities, might not be such a mad concept. And the idea that I could approach a bank and then engage the engine and just drive off is almost incredible. Just needs a pair of wings and it's chitty chitty bang bang. But maybe I'll save that for another day.